First of all, let me say that there is no procedure for reintegration. There is only procedure of repentance and coming to the Lord and to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's number one. Number two, we say about the Archbishop of Canterbury, where it is, it is shameful for any leader who is a church leader to chair and lead a meeting that will mislead the people, move them from the biblical teaching which he vowed to uphold, and then lead them astray. So when you are teaching people and chairing a meeting that allows people to move away from the scripture, to embrace same-sex union or marriage, which is against the teaching of the scripture, you have forfeited your authority to lead. And so that's why he's saying he needs to repent if he wants to lead the church. Now, if he repents and, uh, and, and comes alone, that's wonderful. But I think he has gone too far. Now, do, am I saying he cannot repent? No, he can repent. But if I was to chair a meeting of the church, take them away from the belief, the fundamental belief of the scripture, and lead them astray, I've gone too far. And I believe he has gone too far. Uh, okay. How did, will they, for example, get the sacraments? How, how, how would that work? Okay, first of all, there is no Church of Canterbury. There is the Church of England. <laughs> and the Church of England is, any church is not a building, it's people. So if someone says, I'm in the wrong place, I'm getting wrong teaching, let me move out and come and follow this teaching. We can guide them to where they can get proper biblical teaching. If he's a pastor and he says, you know, I don't belong here anymore. I don't believe what they believe anymore. We are not together. I need to be part of, of, of a church that believes in the scripture. We can guide that person and point a finger to where he can go and be a member of a church or be a member of the diocese. Now, what I'm saying also is that there are people who decide, you not know, as a church, let's say Chibagabaga, for example, as a church, we are moving away from this institution that doesn't believe the scripture anymore. We need a new home. We can provide them a new home. And that new home may be that we create a structure under which they come under. So it may be a church that says, I need a new home. And we can say, you need a new home. Here is a bishop who has a diocese, and his diocese is a Bible-believing diocese, and they can move into that diocese. It can also be, just not too long ago, we, had, we consecrated three bishops in Hall in the UK. Those were pastors that had been ordained in the Church of England. But they realized we can't function there anymore because of the belief. So we consecrated them to be bishops, three of them in the hall. I was there for the consecration. And so we directed them to the European network of churches that are Bible-believing churches that have created a network. That network may end up becoming a diocese. Actually, it's a diocese now. Same thing has happened in New Zealand. We have a new bishop in New Zealand, and we have churches that are under him. Same thing has happened in Brazil. Same thing has happened in, in America. That's what I was try, trying to tell you, that the majority of the people who form what we call Anglican Church in North America, they used to be in the Episcopal Church of North America, uh, in the Episcopal Church of America, what you call tech. When they moved out, we actually consecrated the bishops for them, who would provide the leadership and the spiritual oversight over them. Does that make it clear to you? Thank you.